What we're going to be going over here is fixed overhead variance analysis and we're going to be basing this variance analysis here for our fixed overhead on some different capacity levels that we determine here for allocating our fixed overhead. Okay, so for a variance analysis, really what you're looking at, you're taking some actual results for the period here versus some budgeted performance. Okay, so really we're going to have three different uh, quantities or amounts that we have to deal with with this variance analysis. So we're going to have, we'll start with our static amount here. And this is where we're going to take some budgeted quantity of this fixed overhead that we've, we're going to be using or budgeting here times some budgeted price we have for our fixed overhead. This is on a per unit basis here. Okay, budgeted quantity, budgeted price is going to equal our static budgeted amount here. That's what we establish here in budgeting our fixed overhead here for the period. Now, when our actual results come in here for the period, you're just going to take the actual quantity here that we used in our fixed overhead times some actual price that we paid for a fixed overhead. So that is going to be our actual result. Now we have to determine what we call our flexible amount or a flexible budgeted amount. And just this is going to be what the key here to our whole discussion. It's going to be these denominator hours or this denominator capacity that we've determined here on a per unit basis times some budgeted price that we have. The budgeted price is going to come off our static budget, but these denominator hours that we're going to be looking at here for allocating our uh, fixed overhead here, we don't, we're we looking at, that's what the key here of our problem that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so let's just go through these variances here uh, to understand what we're talking about, and then we can, or our, our formulas here, and then we can go in and look at what we're talking about. So for a fixed overhead variances, we're going to have a spending variance and also a cup volume or capacity variance that I'm looking at. So our expending variance is just going to be doing our actual and our flexible amount. And that's going to be our actual hours that we've used here. And this fixed overhead here allocation is going to be based on direct labor hours. That's why I'm using this here. So we take our actual hours used times some actual fixed overhead rate. And we've been comparing that to our flexible amount. This is the key here. We're going to be looking at these denominator hours and how we're going to have to determine these denominator hours here times some budgeted fixed rate that we've established. So that difference between our flexible amount here and our actual amount here that we'd have, that would be our spending variance. And then our volume or capacity variance, as I call it here, is the difference between our flexible amount and our static amount. So the common uh, factor here between both of those would be the budgeted fixed rate here that we have established for our fixed overhead here. And, and the difference would be the, those denominator hours here versus the budgeted hours allowed. So the difference between your denominator hours and the budgeted hours allowed here times our budgeted fixed rate here is going to be our volume capacity. And these denominator hours, we'll look at it, they're going to be based on the total budgeted direct labor hours for, for our, uh, that we're going to allocate our fixed overhead on. Okay, so the key here is this DH of the denominator hours, and that's going to be our diff based for our different capacity levels. So let's go down and let's look at what we're talking about. Okay, uh, just go through our reference key that we're going to be using here. When I talked about that AF, those were the actual fixed overhead rate that we're going to be have for the period here. This is all for our fixed overhead here. BF would be the budgeted fixed overhead rate. AHU would be the actual hours that we've used here. And BHA is going to be the budgeted hours allowed. And DH, those would be the total budgeted direct labor hours. And those are going to be our denominator hours or our different capacities that we're going to be looking at and allocating our fixed overhead on. Okay, so when we're talking about this AF here, actual fixed rate, and BF, budgeted fixed rate, overhead rate. This is where we're taking, in this case, let's just say for the actual fixed overhead rate, we're going to take our total fixed overhead cost for the period here and divide them by the total direct labor hours that this plant has produced here for the period. Two. And that's going to be our allocation base is going to be our total direct labor hours here. So that amount, dividing your total fixed cost by our total direct labor hours produced by the plant for the period here is going to be your actual fixed overhead rate. And the budgeted fixed overhead rate would just be the same here. You take some total budgeted fixed cost times some and divide it by the total budgeted direct labor hours to come up with some budgeted fixed overhead rate. Okay, 
So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about our fixed overhead rate here. Okay, so this is the case here. We're going to be looking at uh, three different capacity levels that they normally use here when you're allocating. Uh, in this case, we're allocating our fixed overhead here on, based on some different capacity levels. And we're going to allocate that fixed overhead again on direct labor hours that we'll be looking at. Okay, so we'll start with our theoretical amount. And we'll go up and we'll un define these later. We'll go through these amounts uh, later here to determine exactly what we're talking about with theoretical here. But theoretical be some 100% uh, capacity that the plant could put out here. And the practical uh, amount here would be a little less than 100%, but it would be something we can work with that would be an efficient operation for the plant here. And then the normal amount that we're going to be looking at, that would be some average uh, level of operating the plant here. So let's just go through our example here for these different capacity levels and just say for example our plant here that we're working with has a hundred million dollars here in fixed overhead costs here. Now in theory here we're saying that we're gonna this our denominator amount here that we have based on our direct labor hours we're saying that we can the plant can put out a hundred and ten thousand uh, uh, direct labor hours here. It can operate at 110,000 direct labor hours here based on this theoretical amount. So uh, divide 110,000 direct labor hours into your uh, total fixed cost of a million dollars. You're going to get a, a overhead rate here, a, budge, a budgeted fixed overhead rate here of nine dollars per hour. Okay, now let's move over to, over to our practical amount here. So again, same amount million dollars in fixed overhead costs, but now we're saying pra in pra on pr practical terms here, we can only produce at 100,000 direct labor hours. So that division is going to give us a capacity level here of uh, $10 per hour is going to be our budgeted fixed overhead rate. In theory here, we could operate at $9 an hour or uh, allocate our fixed overhead here based on $9 an hour for our direct labor here. Fact is, we said we could produce at a higher direct labor uh, number of direct labor hours. 110,000 versus 100,000 here. Now, if we look at our normal, what we're talking about, our average output level here, again, the same fixed overhead rate of a million dollars, but now in a normal situation here, we can only produce 90,000 direct labor hours here to allocate that overhead. So that's going to give us $11 here per hour for our, our fixed overhead rate. Okay, so you can see here, we got three different allocations here for our capacity levels here uh, for allocating that overhead. When we talk about those capacity levels, uh, theoretically, we're saying we can put out 110,000 uh, direct labor hour, uh, base our operation on 110,000 direct labor hours. That is, we can, effect, uh, can operate at that level here. Practical, we're saying only 100,000 and normally 90,000 here. And they're all allocated on the standard fix, uh, the standard, uh, total amount of overhead here is the same between them. But we came up with different overhead rates here on a, a per direct labor hours. These would be allocated on a per direct labor hour, this allocating our overhead. Okay, so if we go up here and we put it in on a chart here, our fixed overhead allocation alternatives, it'd be some budgeted quantity that we were talking about times some budgeted rate. So our denominator hours in those quantities I'm showing here. DH1, what was it, our theoretical DH here is our practical amount and DH2 here was our normal amount that we're working with. And then we'd have these different rates or prices here for that we calculated for our fixed overhead here. BF1 was what, $9, BF here was $10 uh, per hour here, and BF2 we allocated at $11 per hour. But nonetheless here, when you're, allo and we're gonna be looking at this here on a graph to understand this on a graph here. But when you're allocating or be looking at your variance analysis here, you're going to be really taking these different, if you establish your uh, fixed overhead allocation here based on that theoretical amount here, you're still going to be, you can still be looking at different variances here based on the rate or price here. So if we go on and we said we're going to produce, produce at 110,000 hours here, the DH1, the theoretical amount that we can put out in direct labor, we could still be looking at different price or variances here based on our different prices. BF1 here was $9, BF2 
ten dollars bf2 here eleven dollars so whatever denominator hours we would have here in this case our theater radical amount we could take them on a per unit basis we could be taking it here and looking at our different uh, uh costs that we're going to be looking at so that's just the point we're making at here i'm just saying a point if you protect a uh, predict the Per, pick a certain amount of your allocation in this case those denominator hours you can also come up with different uh, variances based on the different rates that you have here all right so dh1 or dh here would just again that total practical hundred thousand here times the different uh, per unit basis here for your rater price and dh2 same thing here not to confuse things but when we look at this on a graph here you'll understand what we're talking about but nonetheless there's some combination here you're going to have to allocate that overhead based on either the 110,000 hours the 100,000 hours or the 90,000 hours and if you do that you can have some different variances based on the different rate or price that you're working with that nine dollars here the ten dollars here and the eleven dollars here per hour all right okay so we're going to be looking at this in, on graph form here but really when you're looking at these different things you're going to be comparing it to some static amount here you're going to take some unit cost times some output quantity and you're going to compare it to the, that static budgeted amount that we're talking about okay and then one last thing here before we move on uh, when we talked about those different capacity levels here just by definition here our capacity utilization or capacity choices that we have here. We talked about that theoretical or maximum capacity. That would be where we're putting out, a, the plant is operating at 100% of the production. They're producing at 100%. They don't have any downtimes or anything like that. They're just all out producing at maximum, maximum capacity here. And then for our practical capacity, and by the way, that's generally the one that uh, you want to choose here when you're setting up your a different using your different capacity utilizations you really want to work off this the practical capacity here and this is where you're going to have efficient operations but it's going to be less than the hundred percent maximum capacity that you can produce here and for our discussion we're going to be talking about those production volume variances with the practical capacity you're going to have relatively large production volume variances and we'll get into that discussion here now there's another choice here that third choice here would be your normal capacity and this is where you're going to have some average output level that's expected and in the case here of your production volume variances in some periods you're going to have favorable production volume variances and other periods you're going to have unfavorable production volume variances so that's for your normal capacity so we're going to key in on those production variances and talk about those. And then you have the third amount here, and we didn't go through it with our, our setting up our different uh, allocation basis here, but you'd have a plan capacity here. And that's really coming off some master budgeted amount. You're really looking at a short term here, whatever your master budget is for a short term. Whereas the normal capacity and the practical and these other ones are more of a long term estimates on the output that you're going to be looking at and planning for but the plan capacity those would be the number of units expected that you produce in the current period here this minimizes the production volume variance here and that would be for a master budgeted amount so this production volume variance uh, theory in the theory theoretical or maximum capacity you'd really have a very large production volume variances based on that here and the practical because you really can't meet that capacity level here practical capacity relatively large production volume variances normal capacity you see what's happening when you're moving down through these different capacities you're getting less and less production volume variances normal capacity sort of favorable unfavorable it depends it swings back and forth here and then plan capacity you really should have very little production volume variances here and we're going to be keying in on these production volume variances now when we look at our graph okay so now we've moved down to our graphical analysis here and don't be uh, too confused here with this graph but this is the way it works here along our x-axis here this is where we're going to have our direct labor hours those are the overhead our overhead allocation basis here so we'll be looking at our direct labor hours here different direct labor hours 
and then along our y-axis or on the side here that's going to be our overhead cost this is where we're going to take some direct labor hours here that we have excuse me yeah direct labor hours that we've used here times some rate here and that's going to give us our costing here some rate in this case i'm looking here so that budgeted fixed rate times some budgeted hours that we've allowed here based on our static budget and and we'll go through that but that's going to be our cost over here the hours that we our allocation base here and direct labor hours is across here and what we've got here this is one where we were going through that little chart here where we're looking at those three different budget uh, we're looking at our normal our practical and theoretical capacity here we're going to have three different rates that we apply this capacity at we're going to looking at it. and they're going to have different slopes here and how we on a for a certain number of hours we're going to have a certain rate here that we calculated in that we'll the hours times the rate is going to give us a cost here but we're going to have those three different amounts that we're going to be looking at here and then we've got one other line that and this is the key to everything here is this fixed overhead amount here it's fixed or constant that's that budgeted or static amount that we we're looking at here and that doesn't change with the number of hours that we're going to be allocating here it's just constant zero hours allocated you're still going to have a certain fixed overhead right here but this chart here has everything to do with well spending variances here and the volume variances and what we're going to be calculating them on and okay we're gonna we'll go through these different lines here and maybe we should do that here right now starting out with our first our lowest line here that's going to be our theoretical capacity here that was that budgeted fixed rate here times some direct labor hours we're allocating on our direct labor hours here and that budgeted fixed rate here we calculated a nine dollars per hour and our theoretical the amount of direct labor hours that we say this plant can produce on a theoretically operating at 100 percent capacity was at 110,000 hours here so you can see what we'd like you take your nine dollars here uh, per hour basis here of uh, your fixed overhead that you're allocating here nine dollars an hour per direct labor hour here times 110,000 hours which you say you can theory in theory get out here if you take that out you can see you're going to come up with a budgeted amount here of one million dollars that's this is that static amount or that budgeted amount here of one million dollars budgeted fixed rate times the denominator hours here in this it was one million dollars here in this case it's that budgeted fixed rate here one of nine dollars per hour times the denominator hours the dh1 here 110,000 hours all right so that's our theoretical amount and we're going to be looking at those volume variances and we look at the spending variance as well but then we've got this other amount this green line here that's our practical capacity level here those were the budgeted fixed rate here that that times the in this case the direct labor hours here so in this case we had that practical we said it was ten dollars an hour here and in this case we say we can produce a hundred based on a hundred thousand direct labor hours there it is times ten dollars an hour here it crosses our fixed line here intersects this first one intersected the fixed line here with the theoretical want so the green line intersects our fixed amount here again at one million one million dollars here allocating our fixed overhead here all right so that's for our practical amount here now if we look at our normal amount here we said our allocation is going to be eleven dollars per hour here we're going to charge off a fixed overhead based on direct labor hours so bf2 times our direct labor hours here was what in this case our normal amount okay here dh2 here normal amount here uh, DH2 of direct labor hours it's going to intersect our fixed line here our fixed budgeted line here at what eleven dollars times nine ninety thousand here uh, capacity ninety thousand direct labor hours here times eleven dollars here per hour to allocate our fixed overhead here again that's going to approximate one million dollars here so that intersects our fixed overhead amount here at one million dollars and there's key here to why these are being fixed and so forth here but you can see we have three different amounts this is the applied this is how we apply our fixed overhead here 
base and it's uh, the applied fixed overhead here is taking that budgeted rate that we have here times the direct labor hours here. And what we want to do here, we went through all of these here, and maybe let's go up and let's understand first understand our spending variances here, and then we'll look at our volume variances here and get a better understanding of what those are here. So for our spending variance, it's really the difference between our actual cost here. We can go up to our chart and see it. That was our actual hours used here times the actual fixed rate here versus the flexible amount, those denominator hours that we have established times some budgeted fixed rate here. So it's really that difference. The spending variance is really our actual cost versus our budgeted cost here. So all you do here, in any of these cases here, all you do is you go to your specific line or application here based on either normal, practical, or theoretical amounts. You determine whatever hours you're working at here, hit your line, move across, and you, you hit your line here and then you base it on whatever the slope of that line or the allocation rate is here. Just taking your budgeted or whatever direct labor hours you have times that rate here, that's going to give you your budgeted cost over here. And then you can always compare that to the actual cost here that you have for the period. The actual cost isn't changing, but you'd have to look at it in each of these cases here. Normal amount, practical amount, and theoretical amount to determine any spending variances. But spending variances is just the difference between your actual cost here versus what you have for the period. You're based on the whatever number of direct labor hours that you look at have for the period here times those different budgeted rates here. But the volume variance is a little different. That, why we went through and we looked at the intersection of each of these points here, that is where your denominator hours equals those, in this case, those budgeted hours allowed or some budgeted number for your fixed rate here. So that's a key point here. Those are the denominator hours where it equals some budgeted hours here, or whatever the budgeted number, denominator, that denominator equals some budgeted fixed amount that we're looking at here. So if we would go in any one of these points here, let's look at the BF2, our normal amount here. The volume variance is really the, whatever you're looking at, you're always looking at whatever normal, practical, or theoretical amount, you're comparing it to some, in this case, let's say, either the budget hours allowed or the actual hours used. But you're using, comparing it to the budgeted hours allowed here. So what you're looking at here, and first off, maybe let's look at our budgeted hours allowed here. Maybe let's look at that first here. So for our budgeted hours allowed here, we hit our green line at this point here, but we don't hit uh, zero uh, or we are budgeted fixed or we don't our applied rate here doesn't intersect with our fixed rate until we get down to those denominator hours here in this case our dh hours here based on that practical a uh, practical amount here so our volume variance is really the difference between what we have here in our fixed line versus what we had here for in this case the budgeted hours allowed here that was that amount right in here. That means we're under applying this fixed overhead or this fixed overhead rate here. It's under applied anytime it's below this, these budgeted amounts here. But once we get past this intersection point here, then we're, and this would be below the fixed uh, point here, it's unfavorable production volume variances because you haven't play, applied enough here in the case here we're looking at this normal one. Any place below this, in this case, this budgeted hours allowed here, uh, we would have, we're under allocating our overhead here based on this green line. But once we get past this intersection point, then it's going to be a favorable production volume variances. Now this is where we're over applying our overhead here. We're actually running our plant at a better operation here. Minutes you get past what you have your budgeted amount here. And then again, it's the same for our, uh, looking at the, what we had that normal amount, the budgeted fix rate here, where it intersects the line. So at the intersection here, anything applying at any, any applied amount below our fixed rate here would be an unfavorable production volume variance. Once we get past this point, then we'd have a favorable production volume variance here. 
And then the theoretical amount that's sitting way out over here, anything below this intersection point, any applied rate here below it, again, it would be an unfavorable production volume variance. Anything over this fixed rate here would be a favorable. We'd be over applying it here based on our theoretical amounts here. But nonetheless, what we're really looking at here in this under and over applied amount here, just compare it to the budgeted hours allowed here. So what you're doing at, which is normal amount here, you're going to have, uh, the with our normal amount here, you're going to have really a lower production volume variance here. So you're working at a pretty good clip here based on the normal capacity here. You're going to, your unfavorable production volume variance is going to be, compared to your budgeted amount here, is going to be very good here. And then you can just move down here. The practical amount here, you're going to have sort of an intermediate or medium production volume variances here versus your budgeted hours allowed. And then the theoretical one, it's going to be really out of line here. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to produce here at 100, in this case, at 110,000 direct labor hours here before you can have any favorable production volume variance. And let's just go back. The, there's, uh, the practical amount here you'd have to produce at 100,000 uh, uh, direct labor hours before you get any favor favorable production volume variance. And what was it? The normal amount you have to produce here at 90,000 hours. So you can see here, theoretically, uh, you'd have to produce 20,000 more, uh, produce at a, pr a direct labor hour rate here, 20,000 more than the normal amount. So that's going to give you a really high production volume variance. And the practical is sort of in between our normal and our theoretical amount here. Not to confuse everything here, but the point is here, when you're basing on a, based on these different allocation bases, the normal, the practical, and theoretical amount, you're allocating that overhead to your products. You're measuring your plant operation here based on that different overhead allocation basis. So for example, the normal amount here you're allocating at for every direct labor hour you're putting out, you're allocating $11 is going into your product here, allocating your fixed overhead, $11. So the product is sitting with a much higher overhead allocation here based on a normal amount versus the a theoretical amount for the same output here. All right, and again, the practical amount is somewhere in between here. All right, so what we're talking about, the production volume variance is looking at your budgeted fixed overhead here, that constant amount, and comparing it to whatever applied amount you have for your fixed overhead here. All right, so, and where are these lines in are where your different applied rates intersect with your fixed rates that's where you your inner inflection point is between your budget or your unfavorable production volume variances versus your favorable production volume variances but the key is here what different with these different capacity levels and we looked at here these different rates your it 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 just shows you where you're sitting here and applying that fixed overhead, how you're allocating it here, how you're running the plant, and how you're including any fixed overhead rate uh, based on direct labor hours. So if you get a, a certain number of direct labor hours in a particular product here, say you had, I don't know, 10 direct labor hours in the product here, if you're running at the normal rate here, you would have, what, 10 times $11, you'd had $110 of direct labor in your product. But if you're at those 100 hours, if you're working at the practical amount, you'd only have what? Well, 10 hours times 10 would be $100. And theoretically, you'd only have $90 of direct labor overhead allocated in your product. So that's the other thing that you have to be looking at, how you're allocating that directly, or how you're uh, dividing up that overhead into your product here. And of course, operating at a normal amount here, you're applying more uh, direct labor or more overhead, fixed overhead here to your product than you are running at the theoretical amount, producing the same amount of overhead. So that's really the two different keys that we're looking at. Where are you, you're looking at your favorable versus unfavorable production variances based on where your applied rate here intersects with the fixed amount. 
and then you also have and that's for your volume volume variances and then spending variances just looking at your actual cost versus what you have um, versus what your budgeted amounts would have been here okay and that's for your spending variance okay so that's pretty much what we're talking about here when we're talking about uh, those allocating our basing our different based on our different capacity levels we set those different allocation basis for our fixed overhead in this case all right just to remember here remember this little graph here was based on a per unit basis here you just looked at your hours here and per and you deem in your hours times some unit cost basis to determine your total overhead basis here all right and then maybe uh, well, that would be the, the extent of what we're talking about here, but maybe we'll just go down here and look at this one more time. So if you need to take this down here, your production volume variance, that's really the budgeted fixed overhead rate versus your applied fixed overhead rate. Whatever you applied versus the budgeted amount here at a certain point, depending on your direct labor hours. And then just remember the normal, uh, the normal capacity level here had a low, uh, production volume variance. Practical had sort of a medium production volume variance and the theoretical had a very high production volume variance. One other thing we didn't look at, we didn't look at that planned capacity uh, production variance, but that would be worked off the master budget. And again, that would have a very, very low uh, production volume variance. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.